Hi, it's Dr. David Green, founder and CEO of R3 Stem Cell International. Today I'm going to go through the top 10 FAQs on stem cell therapy with R3 International. We know there's a lot to consider when it comes to stem cell therapy. It's a relatively new technology for a lot of folks. Uh, patient education is key to helping you make appropriate healthcare decisions when it comes to you and your family regarding these new technologies. Um, after eight years of experience and 15,000 procedures, we know what the most frequently asked questions are. And here they are. So I'm going to go through each one. What makes international stem cell procedures different? Why consider us for your regenerative care? What kind of biologics are used? Where do they come from? How do they work? Could you reject the biologics? Will it be a cure? Do the numbers of stem cells matter for your treatment? What kind of outcome can you expect and for how long? What are the risks? And how did we come up with our pricing? So what makes international stem cell procedures different? Well, first of all, it kind of depends where you're coming from. If you're coming from Canada, the fact that they exist <laughs> is different because in Canada, they're not allowed to be performed right now. Um, if you're coming from, let's say, the U.S., one of the big differences is that the biologics in other countries are, are allowed to be cultured. So let's say you start with a million and then culturing can be performed, taking it up to 30 or 50 million. You know, there's a lot more available and we do that very safely. Um, I'll explain in a little bit. Um, also, the, the options of what are available are much more extensive. For instance, most country um, most countries do not uh, want you to. So what makes international stem cell procedures different? Well, it does depend on your point of, of view. For instance, if you live in Canada, the fact that they exist at all and are allowed to be performed um, is unique because in Canada they're illegal. Um, and then, you know, your other points of view might be very different. But at any rate, predominantly what we know is that the biologics um, at international, our, our locations, are allowed to be cultured. So you're allowed to take, you know, a million cells and culture them. We do this very safely to get it up to, say, 30 or 50 million. Um, so the biologics have more uh, potential. Um, and when you look at the options that are available, um, we're allowed to treat all types of conditions where we where we have our clinics and the application so for example certain countries intrathecal um, administration is frowned upon it's very safe I have no idea why that would be an issue uh, we do it frequently because you can get a lot of stem cells into the central nervous system um, so there are differences with regards to that um, and pricing with our economy of scale over the years, significant volume, we've been able to leverage lower pricing on our quality biologics, um, and we pass that right through to the patient. Um, our goal is to make it available to as many folks as possible around the world. We're not looking to just treat the wealthy um, for twenty, thirty, fifty thousand dollars. That is not our model, um, and I'll go through that later. Why should you consider us for your regenerative care? Well, we've been doing this a long time. We've developed over 17 unique protocols um, and customized options. For instance, um, you may have a condition that requires very high cell counts, but it might be best, our providers might deem it best if you have a hybrid, a certain amount IV, a certain amount intrathecal, or a certain amount IV and a certain amount into various joints. Uh, the question is how much volume to put into each. We have a lot of experience with that. Uh, I think one of the testaments to how great our patients do is that 35% of our procedures now come from patient referrals, friends, family, because the outcomes have been so, so stellar. Our outcome with patient satisfaction is over 85%, and that includes all conditions and severity. We do all our procedures in a medical clinic setting either in a hospital, attached to a hospital, in a surgery center, a professional medical um, clinic building. Uh, and we do that by design. We want to make sure it's a very professional um, procedure setting. 
Um, and then if anything were to possibly have an issue, we have the collaboration necessary. Our safety history is unparalleled. In all this time, we've never had a significant adverse event. We've never had a deep infection. Um, I'm knocking on wood here. Um, we've never had a, a disease transmission or significant allergic reaction or rejection, none of that. Um, and I think that's a testament to the quality assurance methods we've, we've put in place, uh, not just at the lab, but also you know, at the clinics. Um, the quality of our biologics is, is second to none. Um, we, I'll go through those in a moment. And we do offer VIP escort transportation from the airport to the clinic and the hotel and, and back. So what kind of biologics are we used? Well, we've had experience with a lot of it over the years. Um, for instance, using the patient's own bone marrow or adipose, um, using amniotic fluid and umbilical cord tissue. What we found is that umbilical cord tissue has provided our patients with the best clinical outcomes and the most cost-effective options. And the umbilical cord has Wharton's jelly in it, which is a matrix that surrounds the vessels, and umbilical cord blood, which is what comes from those blood vessels. It falls into the allogeneic category, which just means it comes from a donor. It's not from yourself. And I'll show we've never had a rejection from any of the biologic. It does have an amazing combination of very young mesenchymal stem cells, very young hematopoietic stem cells. And the best reason I could say as to why we think these biologics give such a great result is because of the youth of the cells and the reaction that they spark in one's body. A lot of people call it the fountain of youth phenomenon. Um, I won't disagree with that. Um, I could go into some of the studies showing the old mouse and the young mouse and the effect that the younger blood had on the old one. Um, but it's the same concept, is that you're providing young cells, young proteins um, into a person's body. The reaction that they spark up helps other older cells to reprogram themselves, regenerate, um, and help repair. So where do these biologics come from? Well, it comes from consenting donors after a scheduled C-section. And the reason we use a scheduled C-section, first of all, is it's a sterile procedure. It minimizes the risk of any contamination. Um, the yield of the biologic is very high because you get all the amniotic fluid, the umbilical cord, the placenta, um, as opposed to a vaginal birth where, first of all, you might have contamination. Second of all, um, the water's broken hours before, so the amniotic fluid may be gone. Also, because it's scheduled, you have plenty of time to do the screening of the, the mother to make sure they are an acceptable candidate and to do the consent form, answer questions, things like that. So here's an example of an actual product analysis certificate that is obtained um, from these biologics. And each donor, which is called a lot, um, each lot gets tested uh, by an outside third party for everything you see here and more, but this is a snapshot. So the biologic is tested for Lyme, Chaga, CMV, hepatitis, HIV, uh, syphilis, West Nile virus, and a sterility test looking at any bacteria. These tests take about two weeks to come back. So once the processing of the biologics is complete, it stays cryogenically preserved in a freezer for that time period. And once the screening comes back all negative, only then can it be used. Can you have a rejection reaction from the biologic? The answer is we've never seen that. There's many, many studies to back up why you don't see a rejection. Here's um, info from one of them. In the 1930s, cord blood actually was used for transfusions. They had a shortage of, of actual blood, so they used cord blood. They didn't do any HLA, ABO matching, and they didn't have any adverse events. 1999 to 2004, there was a decent sized study of 129 patients that received umbilical cord blood with no preconditioning or matching. They didn't have any rejection reaction for, for years. There's no evidence of graft versus host, host disease with cord blood treatments. In fact, cord blood is now used as a treatment for graft-versus-host disease. So not only did we find out it doesn't 
cause it, it can actually help um, get rid of it. Anyway, there's many clinical trials showing, showing these. Here's another study. The donor to recipient ABO mismatch doesn't impact outcomes. It doesn't cause rejection. All right, so let's answer this question. Will stem cells be a cure for my condition? In the way that the technology works right now, stem cell therapy is not a cure for anything. Um, I'm not talking about a bone marrow stem cell transplantation for cancer. That's a whole different topic. I'm talking about for what we do them for. Um, it can improve your condition dramatically, but it's not going to cure it. This is not a one and done procedure, and a lot of patients get upset when they hear that because from some source they've heard that that could be the case. It's just not. Do the numbers of stem cells matter for treatment? Well, We've grappled with this question for years, and now it's become very clear to us that they absolutely do matter. Um, now, we, we do also know from a lot of studies that the stem cells that you get in your treatment are probably not the ones that are going to directly turn into the cartilage or liver or whatever else. But there are so many methods of action of what they do in the body that having more of them um, we've seen is incredibly effective. So up to a point, I need to clarify that. So when you look at all the studies out there for autism and kidney failure and um, heart and things like that, it's typically anywhere from one to five million stem cells per kilogram, depending on the condition. So what that means is anywhere from 30 million up to 200 million. But when we look at stem cell life in the body versus you know, how much a person can use, most likely it's 50 to 100 million at one setting, okay? So anything more than that, we don't give in one procedure. We would, we would separate that by a few days. What kind of outcome can I expect and for how long? It really is a loaded question because people are just different, you know? It's not one size fits all. It's not going to be one answer that that is black and white. Um, overall, our patient satisfaction is 85%. We ask patients a year out from procedures, you know, would you have it done again? Would you recommend it to friends and family? 85 out of 100 say yes. Uh, we're talking about results that are much, much better than a steroid injection. Those only last like two weeks or so. Typically, results last over a year. Some conditions might need it every six months. Some might need it every three, five years for arthritis or something like that. Um, the more severe the condition is, typically the more often it's going to be necessary, such as if you're on stage four kidney failure, most likely you're going to need a treatment every six to 12 months, liver failure, things like that. But it is going to vary. What are the risks? Well, these have been very safe procedures at our clinics. We have not seen rejection, as I mentioned. There's a rare risk of disease transmission. We haven't seen it, but it does need to be mentioned. Very, very low risk of infection. Have we seen infections? Yes, we have seen some superficial, you know, cellulitis types of infection. We have never seen a deep infection, um, thank goodness. And usually what the, the side effects are would be low-grade fever, maybe some chills or dizziness, some nausea for 24 hours. Um, Nothing that's persisted for, for more than a few days, all right? So it's usually fairly mild. I do want to mention that we don't use embryonic stem cell therapy or induced pluripotent stem cell therapy. Neither of those are ready for prime time um, use by a long shot. So it's not something you should consider to have done clinically. Um, and there are several reasons. Embryonic stem cells oftentimes don't know when to stop replicating. Um, that can be a problem if, if a tumor is going to result. And in addition, embryonic stem cells routinely get rejected by one's body. So we don't have that problem with the mesenchymal or hematopoietic stem cells, so that's what we use. So here's a study showing that uh, Wharton's jelly stem cells in this study did not induce any tumor formation, unlike the embryonic stem cells. Here's another study looking at tumorigenicity evaluation, and they showed that in vivo or in vitro, they didn't have any tumor potential. So how do we come up with our pricing, and are there any extra fees? 
Well, when I was putting together the international program a few years back, I wanted to provide top-of-the-line treatment, the Mercedes of, of stem cell biologics and treatment, for the price of a Ford or a Chevy, um, you know, something that's less expensive. I, I, didn't, I don't have anything against Ford. Uh, we actually own Ford vans for our transport. I love them. Um, but you get the idea, right? Because of our economy of scale and volume, that's exactly what we did. Um, our mission is to make stem cell therapy available to virtually everyone in need. Um, we didn't want to make it to where the starting prices were twenty, twenty-five thousand dollars $25,000 plus the cost of, of travel. I think that's, you know, people can get it, but I just think it's ridiculous. We only have extra fees for a few things. One is sedation, um, if someone needs that. Um, intrathecal, which is into the spinal canal, spinal cord, um, that's extra 500 And then if it's a spinal uh, procedure, we have to bring in extra specialists for those types of things. And um, I think we've kept that basically very, very reasonable. Our treatment programs right now are in Mexico and Pakistan. We have more locations onboarding soon. Uh, it's a long vetting process. Um, the process is, is fairly simplistic. It starts with a free phone consultation with one of our experienced stem cell doctors who will listen to your history. Um, we can help get your medical records and review those. Um, and then, you know, about 80% eight, of patients do qualify for a procedure. Not everyone does. Um, and then we have the patient concierge representative who assists with all the travel logistics, including the travel from the airport to the clinic and back. We don't cover the airfare, um, and in most cases the hotel, but we can help set those up because we have special rates. Now, I do want to rec uh, let you know that our cells come from either U.S. FDA-regulated labs, that is CGMP compliant, or the equivalent, okay? So if it's in a foreign country, a lot of times we bring the cells from the U.S., um, but sometimes if we find a lab that not only meets but exceeds the FDA standards, um, we, will, we will go that way. We have a pristine safety record, as I mentioned. Our quality assurance standards actually exceed those of the FDA. Umbilical cord stem cells uh, do get cultured. We have a 90% plus viability. And these are very pure, potent cells that are below the fifth generation. Anything above that, the concern is that you can start getting non-functional stem cells, mutations, things like that, so we avoid that. R3 has been in the news a lot recently. We won the USA's leading regenerative therapy services provider in 2020. We've also won the 10 most innovative, 10 best companies, 50 smartest companies. We've been featured on every major media uh, channel you can uh, think of. Um, the process we're starting of us, like I said, is, is not hard at all. We, if you get in contact with us, we'll set you up with a free phone consultation. You can go to r3stemcell.com. There's a drop-down that shows the, the various country websites. Um, you know, if, if Pakistan's closer to you or uh, Mexico or any other country that we're in, you know, you can see that. Our number is the USA prefix, 001, um, and then just dial 888-988-0515. Thank you so much for watching. We look forward to treating you.